Hey friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always so thrilled to have you here. So today I have um, a sort of a pre-painting process demo for you. So for the most part when you see my videos, my paintings start off looking like this. Everything is drawn on and usually I have already filled in some sort of background or something. But this painting actually starts out as a roll of oil primed Belgian linen, which is like ugh, a dream to paint on and a piece of wood. So most artists, especially ones that have been practicing their craft as long or 10 times longer than I have, have very specific materials that they like to use and, and work on. So, you know, certain papers, whatever. Um, I used, to, I've, I've tried everything basically from painting on, you know, the, the oil paper to getting my own raw canvases, um, making the, up my frames, stretching them, priming them with gesso like three and four times, priming and sanding, priming and sanding. And then I, uh, a few years ago when I was at this amazing, like the best artist workshop ever in France, I got introduced to this, the oil primed Belgian linen and oh my God. This stuff is like a dream, let me tell you, but it is pricey, okay? It's very expensive, very expensive. Um, but it's so nice to paint on and it comes primed like this. This is how it comes out of the roll. Um, and it's just so wonderful to paint on that, you know, I just kind of splurged. This is actually like my, this roll is like my Christmas present to myself two years ago. Um, anyways, so I'm gonna show you today how I start off with a roll and end up like this. Now, real quick, a lot of artists uh, make their own or buy their own um, frames and then they stretch their canvas, which I used to do that. It's great. I now mount my Belgian linen on wood panels. Now, this is great for a few reasons. Um, for one, it uses way less of the linen. If I had to wrap a canvas, of course, I would need it five or six inches bigger around each side. With this, I just need just a little bit, just enough to kind of uh, cut it down. Um, for two, um, I tend to paint kind of like I'm drawing almost where my hand will touch the linen. I know it's not great and sometimes I do use um, one of those little bars, but it's just a habit I've done forever and so I've definitely stretched out some canvases a little bit, pressing on them for, you know, hours and hours. And number three, especially now that I've moved out in Hawaii, I wind up shipping things to the mainland for shows and clients and stuff like that. And this way, it just is so secure when I pack it up to ship. I know nothing's gonna get stretched. It's not gonna get damaged. I'm not gonna have to worry about, you know, staples or anything in the background. I mean, I, I frame it so it's not just like a piece of wood, but it's just so much nicer for shipping. So for all of those reasons, this is the material that I paint on. Um, so I hope you learned something today. Like I said, this is a very specific um, process for me and my artwork, who knows what you like to do, give this a whirl, you know, try it out. You can do other kinds of things on the wood too. Um, oh, and if you're thinking about ordering some linen or any paints or anything, I'm a Dick Blick affiliate. And so if you use my link down below for any art purchase, it helps to support this channel and that would be really huge. I would super duper appreciate that. And don't forget to subscribe if you learned a little something today because that also helps to support my channel and it makes sure that you come back over and over and over again for all of the artsy goodness. So, I hope you enjoyed my little process video today. I know normally you guys just see it starting like this, so now you get to see how this turns into this, turns into, I don't have a painting behind me. Yes, great story. Mwah. Love you guys, thanks for being here. <laughs>So one of the best things about creating your own painting surfaces is that you get to be in complete control of exactly the size and shape of your painting surface. It's wonderful to be able to plan your paintings and then cut your boards accordingly. I just popped down to my locally owned hardware store that happens to have the most incredible view ever and get them to cut all my boards for me. Now as I said in the intro, I'm going to be using this amazingly smooth oil primed Belgian linen to create my painting surfaces. Now you can use any kind of linen or canvas or even very thick oil paper, but this is my favorite. If you decide to pick up a roll of your own, please use my link for Bluke down below because it will go to help support this channel. Thank you so much.
Now, since I am tiny house living, I do all my big projects on the floor, so I'll go ahead and roll out my canvas and then place my boards on accordingly. The next step is, of course, to trace around them, give yourself a little extra room, and then go ahead and cut out all of your squares and rectangles. Alrighty, and then you're going to want to pick up a bottle of some really good industrial strength spray adhesive. I got the best stuff money could buy. The best way I have found to use this adhesive for this specific project is by going back and forth and giving a nice good coat, making sure to hit all the corners and, and edges especially. Then I go over and I get the actual back of the linen and I go back and forth, back and forth, getting all the corners and edges, especially on this one too. Now what you're going to want to do is give the base and linen about one minute of dry time so it just kind of gets evenly tacky and then grab yourself like an old credit card and you're going to want to slowly, slowly start smoothing it on. You see how I'm starting with one edge, making sure that it's really nice and clean on that one side and then I'm gonna use the credit card to slowly, slowly push it on and make sure that I'm not getting any air bubbles in there. Trust me, any air bubbles will become a problem later on. They look bad, they get a glare. It's a pain in the neck, I've had it happen. Just be very careful and diligent with this step and you should be fine. Now that we have allowed the glue to dry, it is time to trim the excess. So you're going to want to start with a nice, sharp razor blade. Yes, a sharp one. Do not get some dull razor blade that is going to damage and rip up the corners of your paintings. A nice, sharp razor blade and just simply slice right along the edges and it will be so nice and clean and smooth. Now, since we used an oil primed linen, your surface is technically ready to paint. Of course, I have a preference of not really painting or drawing on white, so I'm going to show you how I stain my linens. First, I just get a nice big brush and usually either a raw or burnt umber. I use a tiny, tiny bit of the paint and a whole bunch of my terpenoid, which you can see is a little dirty right now, but that's okay because I'm using this to stain my canvases. So I'm using about 10 times the amount of terpenoid as I am paint right here, mixing it in and just making it so liquidy. It's almost like an oil paint that's really like a water. <laughs> Now I'm just going to take that and slather it all over the surface, all willy-nilly. It does not need to be perfect. It does not need to be beautiful. Basically, you just want your surface to be covered as much as possible. Next, I'm just going to take a clean paper towel and rub it all over the painting surface. This helps to disseminate the paint evenly all over the surface, as well as to kind of blot up any extra terpenoids. Now I'm going to show you how I actually create the drawing. So I take the piece of wood either before or after you've affixed the linen to it and trace it out on a piece of paper. That way you have the exact proportions of your painting already set up. So today I'd like to share with you a little bit about how I do my drawing process. Now I've been asked before why most of my videos start with the drawing already on the linen surface and that is simply because it takes a while to do the drawing and it's not very interesting to watch. You can see I'm going in real time here just starting out a little bit of measurement and I don't know how long you guys actually would want to sit here and watch me measure back and forth back and forth but that's how it works. So I'll sit there and I'll kind of figure out my placement and then I just basically slowly start to draw. And as you can also see, I draw very, very lightly because I have to erase, which makes it so you practically cannot see it while recording. I also happen to step in front of the camera a lot and do all sorts of awkward things that just don't make for very interesting filming. So this is why I don't start most of my videos like this. I did, however, wanted to give you guys a chance to kind of see my process a little bit. But as you can see, it's not that exciting, so I'm not going to make you sit here and bear with me the whole time. And 
And once I like my outline, then I go ahead and pencil in any other important details to serve as my guide for painting. And now it is time to transfer your drawing to your linen surface. Now, I must admit I have a bit of an advantage here because I have this great carbon paper which my dad actually left to me when he passed away. Now, I know that seems like kind of a weird and random thing to leave someone on your deathbed, but my dad was a fellow artist and he knew that this paper, since typewriters are pretty much out the window, is very hard to find nowadays. And so the fact that he saved this package for me is actually really meaningful and useful and I love it because now I get to think of my dad whenever I'm setting up my paintings. Now don't worry if you don't have access to this wonderful carbon paper because all you need to do is before attaching the piece of paper to your linen surface just use a piece of charcoal and rub 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 all over the back of your drawing. Then once you tape it to your board and trace over it with a sharp pencil, the image should come right through the soot on the other side. I pretty much always wind up going back and just sharpening things up, making sure I get all the details that I need. Now because I've started doing aerosol backgrounds, I like to make a little paper cutout and cover up the image that I'm trying to save to make sure it stays nice and clear before I bring out my spray paint and stencils and all the magic secret sauce that I do to create these kaleidoscopic backgrounds. And before you know it, voila, you have got an amazingly wonderful, smooth, prepped painting surface that is exactly the size and shape that you wanted and is ready to jump on the easel. Thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope you learned a little something. And if you do, think about hitting that subscribe button. See you next time.